Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio. As you can see we've got a bright and sunny day, quite rare in the UK, and today I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Now this picture is relatively normal, it doesn't need a great deal of equipment to make it, but what sets it apart is the ethereal view that you get by having a very long shutter speed in parts of the image and other parts of the image are quite short. Now all that was achieved with the aid of frame averaging, sometimes called image averaging. And this is a post-production technique which averages the image over several different shots. And in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so I'm going to be using this medium format camera, but you can do this with literally any camera uh, which has the ability to control its shutter speed, etc. Now the other thing that you're going to need for this is a tripod. So I'm just going to pop the camera on the top of the tripod here. This will give me a steady platform to base all the images on. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is just frame up the shot. So I'm just going to look through the viewfinder. There we are. That's given me a rough idea. And now I can just tap on the centre of the screen at the back here and that will zoom all the way in and I can just get a precise focus. There we go. Right, so that's the focus done. Next thing to do would be to sort out the exposure. Now I'm just going to use the auto exposure in the camera to start with. OK, so you can see I'm in full manual mode. I have a shutter speed of 125th of a second, ISO 50 and an aperture of f8. And I want to change the aperture to give me a bigger depth of field. So I'm just going to take that up initially to f16. And I'll take the shutter speed down to about the 25th of a second. There we go. So at those settings then, uh, I've got a relatively slow shutter speed, which is what I want. I need to blur the background. OK, so I'll just grab an image and we'll see what we get. I've got the image on the back of the screen here, and that's looking OK. I could double tap in to get the centre of the image, which doesn't look too bad. It's maybe a little bright overall. So I'll just take it down uh, from F16 to F22. And we'll grab that again. So once again, we'll just tap on just to see what the image is like. And we've actually got a little bit of motion blur on the main subject there. So we're in the right ballpark. I could, in fact, uh, just change these settings a little more uh, to give me a bit more blare. But I'm not going to get much more than what I have at the moment. So the way to do that would be to take a sequence of pictures and then average those pictures in post-production. So that's what I'm going to do. OK, so to average those, I'll just find my time lapse here. I'm going to set this up so that I have what, uh, one second interval between each frame? One and a half seconds. And I'll have an initial timer of one second. And I want to take uh, a test to start with, so I'll start with just taking 10 images. I will just initiate that. OK, so that's just captured a sequence of 10 images. And we can just see the sort of motion blur that I'm getting on each image. But I want to make sure that the motion blur I'm getting is purely from uh, the wind blowing the grass and not from uh, anything to do with the camera or the shutter. So to eliminate any vibration, I'm going to put this into electronic shutter mode. Uh, therefore, the mirror will lock up and the only shutter which will operate is the electronic one in the sensor. This way there is absolutely no vibration. So to do that, I'll just go to Capture Setup, move along, go down 
to shutter. Just put that in. Electronic shutter only. Now, as you can probably see, the wind isn't blowing very much today. So what I'm going to do is wait until we get a bit more wind and then I'll capture another sequence of 10. Okay, so with all those now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the sequence of images that I captured earlier. So here they all are, and so on. So the first part of the process is to make all the separate files uh, into one file and have separate layers. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is create a stack. So I'm going to go to File, come down to Scripts, go down to Load Files into Stack, and just ask it to add the open files. We'll just click on OK. So now I have one file which contains all the images on different layers. So I can dispense with the camera originals. I've always got those to go back to should I need them. So what I want to do now is combine all these separate layers into one image. And I want to do that in such a way that I can preserve the movement that I've got in each individual layer. So if I just zoom in temporarily to this one, you see that we've got a little bit of motion blur here due to the wind blowing the grass in the field. Now I have a, a different type of motion blur on each individual image. And what I need to do is combine all those together. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is turn all these into a smart object. And the way to do that is just to click on the top one, come down to the bottom one, hold down the shift key and click on the bottom one. That will select all of them. I then right click and just go up to Convert to Smart Object. Just do that. So by doing that, it's now opened up some other possibilities for me. If I now go to the Layer Control and come down to Smart Objects, I can now go to Stack Mode. And in here, I have various mathematical algorithms that I can use to combine the images. I want to use an arithmetic mean, which will, in effect, add the time of each individual exposure into one. So I'll just click on that, and there we go. So now I have this rather ethereal look to the field. But it's also applied that to the main subject, which was possibly blowing a little bit in the wind as well. So I just need to address that. But the main part of the process is to do this frame averaging, which has worked very well, I think. OK, so now just to address this, what I'm going to do is just load up one of the images where this is actually sharp. There we are. So if I now go to that and just select all, edit copy, and go back onto my processed image, just go edit paste, that will paste that on top of what I've already got. So that's my ethereal field, and that's my sharp central subject. So all I need to do now is just add a layer mask to this layer, like so, and I'm just going to invert that layer mask. So anywhere that I paint in white on this layer mask will reveal that particular part of the image. So just making sure that the foreground colour is set to white. You find a paintbrush. Just adjust the size somewhat. And now I can just carefully paint in the actual parts that I want to stay sharp. OK, so now with that done, uh, what I can do is have a look at a crop. I'm using 16 by 9 as this will be used for video. I'm just going to tighten that up a little and maybe just 
straighten up the horizon a bit. I might concentrate that a bit more. There we are. So with that, I'll just click on OK. And there we have it. So by combining several images in this way, it will give you a very similar effect to having a very hard neutral density filter on the top of your lens. But this way is much more adaptable and much more controllable. Now this technique has many applications and this is just one of them. And I think the effect in this image has turned out rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that picture and if you like watching these sort of things do click on the other pictures as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.